you are busy, you are overworked, and you need to get more done. For the record, I am the same. Over time, I created a method for handling my activities and my time that I can rely on, and it's effective to me. I know what you're thinking. You are not me. But everyone learns in different ways. But you can always get inspired by some of these methods and apply them in your day-to-day. -day. You might be surprised of the outcomes. One of the many distractions we all have are our devices. Smartphones, tablets, smartwatches, all are competing to grab our attention. The problem is that when it happens, and it happens, in order to get back to the state of flow, it takes way more time than checking the latest post of our best friend on Twitter or deleting from our inbox the newsletter from an online grocery shop. On average, scientists have estimated in 15 minutes the time to get back in deep focus after being distracted by something. Not great, huh? So, we must be careful and create an environment that allows us to strive. Devices are not just distractions, we can leverage them to work for us instead of against us. So let me show you how I organize myself, and I'm sure you can do the same, or maybe even better than what I'm doing. With the right apps and widgets, you can automate your daily tasks and track key metrics to boost your productivity. There are several features that we are not leveraging on these expensive devices. And sometimes it's just for lack of knowing or sometimes for laziness. Let's be honest. In the past videos that you can find in the productivity playlist in this channel, I explained several techniques for improving your focus, reducing procrastinations and better handling your tasks. Today, we are seeing them in practice. I want to walk you through how I apply them in my life so you can see how simple but useful they could be and you can always tailor them into your routines and habits. During last Christmas break, I decided to refresh my knowledge on iOS devices and look if other features could be integrated in my daily routines. At the end of the day, we got devices that cost hundreds if not thousands of pounds or dollars. And the main function is exchanging information. So I was asking myself, can they do better? Can they help us to achieve more, simplifying our life? Now, I truly believe so. It's time to put my money where my mouth is. When I want to reduce the noise because I want to enter in the flow quickly, there are three things that I do. First, I turn on my favorite lo-fi playlist as having continuous musical background instead of silence, hides me my concentration by preventing distractions. The absence of a vocalist in the music prevents my mind from involuntary shifting, focused to decipher the lyrics. If you wanna give it a go, I suggest to try lo-fi covers of popular song playlists on Spotify, lo-fi beats, always a Spotify playlist, and Kiroku Radio that are free volumes, but my favorite for now is the first one. And you can find it in any app you're using for listening to music or even on YouTube. Second, I remove all the distraction from my desk. The cleaner, the better. I don't want to have anything that could grab my attention nearby while I'm working. Last but not least, I turn on focus modes on my Mac or iOS devices. Before Christmas, I always ignore focus mode, but now are an essential part of my productivity. Let me show you a few I have created. Focus mode is in the system settings of your Mac. When I go there, uh, as you can see, I have created several focus modes, uh, depends from the activity that I'm doing during the day. So for instance, if I go in the morning, uh, I can decide who can call me, which apps can send a notification, or more importantly, I can set the schedule. So every morning between 7 and 8 a.m., uh, I turn on this focus mode. Then I can uh, go to another focus mode, like do not disturb, and I have a completely different configuration. I can allow some people, I can allow some apps. Uh, and once again, I can decide which day 
this focus mode will start if I define a shadow. Sleep mode is by default available in your operating system and uh, there you can configure it in the way that you want. Every single iOS device can be configured with its own app, so that focus mode when kicks in can be completely customizable. As you have seen, you can create your own focus modes based on your specific needs and preferences. For example, you can create a focus mode for when you are studying, working on a project or even taking a break. You can share your focus status with the others and let them know when you are available for calls or messages. This is a functionality available only for Apple users. This can help you manage your communication more effectively and reduce interruptions. Remember to have all your devices with the same Apple ID and you're good to go. You just need to synchronize them. The moment you apply a focus mode, it will be spread across every single Apple device with the same Apple ID. And you can customize them based on their capabilities. Let's move on on widgets. As we haven't seen, we can associate different screens to different focus modes. Therefore, we can leverage the iOS widgets to access our information more quickly when we are in a specific focus mode. For instance, when I activate the writing focus mode, I create a screen with all the apps I use for the specific activity, like a mind map or Google Drive, all the essential tools for accomplishing my task. Widgets are small apps and extremely useful. With iOS 17, they will become even more useful than before because they are now interactive. So you don't have to open the application for performing a specific action. As I said several times, I want to have a frictionless system that helps me to quickly get access to the information I need and avoid potential destruction and widgets are the perfect companion for that. One thing that I recommend is using smart stacks. With smart stack, you can have multiple widgets in the same spot, so you can quickly go through different information just swiping up or down. With some apps, you can even customize which part of the application you want to see. For instance, when I'm in writing mode, I want to see the to-do list of the book I'm writing. But when I'm in work mode, I want to see the to-do list that I created for my working tasks. This is a classic example how you can customize and have the, the device working for you and helping you to achieve what you want. Before we move on, there is another widget I want to drag your attention to. It's the shortcuts widget that collects a bunch of action you can automate to simplify your work. For instance, if I want to create a short URL from a link I copied from the browser and share with someone, I can just tap on my shortcut and paste the short URL generated in my chat. Brilliant, isn't it? Shortcuts app has been available since iOS 12, so it's been a while there, but I don't know how many Apple users in my circle that have leveraging them extensively. However, investing time learning them can drastically simplify your work and your life as well. Let me show you a bunch of automation I use daily. This year, I bought a few smart plugs that I disseminate in my home to reduce the energy cost. In UK, raise a lot. I got two of them in my office, one plug into the Apple Studio display and the other for the standing desk and lights. I created a shortcut that checks every morning where my iPhone is located and then turns on the Apple Studio display when I'm at home. When I'm out of town or in the office, the smart plugs in my home office are off saving energy. Clever, isn't it? But I didn't stop here. The automation is running only during weekdays, so I know during the weekends I will spend time with my family and I don't have to stay in the office. You can get quite sophisticated with the logic in a shortcut, leveraging all the features on your device. Another example is when I activate the focus mode called external monitor. This mode is used when I plug my iPad to an external monitor. Considering I got a lot more space with another screen, I have for sure an external keyboard and a mouse available what I did is designing a screen for my iPad that have only widgets so I can have quickly access to the latest files I used. On top of that, through an automation available on the Shortcuts app, I open Spotify on my favorite lo-fi playlist. In a few moments, I feel immediately relaxed and ready to enjoy my time on side projects. If you don't know where to start with Shortcuts, fear not, Apple got you covered. When you go to the gallery in the Shortcuts app, you can see a multitude of shortcuts available there that are all free 
and ready to use. You can obviously create your own as well, and they are available in all your Apple devices. The capabilities are endless. I can run a shortcut using Siri or from my Apple Watch, for instance. There are many websites that are allowing you to download pre-made shortcuts. I leave some in the video description so you might find something useful over there. Remember, you can always combine shortcuts with your existing ones, so it's easier to create richer automation without spending too much time on them. If I caught your attention with shortcuts, please let me know in the comments. I would be more than happy to record a video showing how to create custom shortcuts and show you how simple the process is. As you have seen, the device we are using on a day-to-day -day base can make you more productive when leveraged properly. There is a bit of a learning curve and time to spend, especially at the beginning when you set up everything. But there are plenty of resources out there that help you to configure this device in the exact way that you want it. Let me share three key learnings you have to remember when you configure your devices for productivity. First, make it easy to access important apps. You want to be able to get things done quickly, but if you have to dig through multiple screens or, or menus in order to open an app, then it's not going to happen. Number two, use focus modes like the do not disturb when you need them. When you're working on something important and you have nothing else planned for the day, turn on do not disturb mode so the incoming calls and notifications don't interrupt your flow. With focus mode, you can remove all the noise and the apps that makes your life more complicated. Number three, create widgets so that information is always at hand without having to open the app first. If there is something that comes up often during the day, it's better that you consider to create a widget in your screen for a quick access in your focus mode. Remember, we want to have a frictionless system that allows us to go accomplish our tasks quickly. Now that you know what tools are available to help you to be more productive, it's time to put them in practice. The best way to do this is by trying out different combinations of apps and widgets until you find what works best for your needs. Everyone has different priorities and needs. The key is finding the right combination of apps and gadgets that helps make your life easier so that they don't overwhelm or distract from what really matters, doing good work. If you have any shortcuts, favorite widget or apps you use daily, please add in the comment below so everyone can benefit from that. Thanks for listening and I can't wait to see you in the next episode of My 50 Cents.